morning. Welcome to Dr. Dick in Sports. My name is Jason Avedesian. My name is Marissa Liu. Modern day tennis requires athletes to alter their biomechanical behavior due to varying playing surfaces, including acrylic, grass, and clay. Acrylic courts are often concrete or asphalt surfaces cut with several layers of covered acrylic paint. Grass is a soil-based line lawn with top class course specified by the type of grass used. And finally, clay is constructed using natural stone that is crushed to varying degrees and bound with water. First, we'll be discussing the mechanical and biomechanical properties of each surface. Court surfaces differ in mechanical properties. Due to its gritty surface, clay courts have lower coefficients of friction with the player compared to acrylic surfaces, allowing players to slide greater distances. However, clay courts create a high frictional coefficient with the ball and creates a slower paced game compared to an acrylic surface. Due to its increased coefficient of friction and coefficient of restitution, clay courts create a high and gentle bounce as depicted when de comparing the bounce on a clay court to a grass surface. Grass is a faster surface than clay and rallies are often shorter. A grass court allows up to 25% of force reduction during movements, the mechanically softest of the three surfaces. Acrylic courts are mechanically harder and stiffer, allowing less than 10% of force reduction in common tennis movements. Furthermore, when performing Tennis specific movements, players slide greater distances and are in contact with the ground longer on clay compared to acrylic. Due to sliding, the clay surface affected how players perform tennis specific movements, allowing for greater attack angles, increased knee flexion, and later peak ankle dorsiflexion. The angle of attack is shown in Figure 1. From the research of Starbuck, compared to acrylic, greater Hallux region pressure was demonstrated on the clay surface, which could be attributed to which could be attributed to gripping the surface in order to perform a turning movement. Increased gripping could lead to overuse injury of the flexor hallucis longus. The pressure distributions on clay and acrylic surfaces are shown in Figure 2. Along with increased impact forces and loading rates, a more inverted foot position was observed on the acrylic surface compared to clay. The physical demands of a tennis match is influenced by the surface. Young tennis players cover more total distance and at higher intensities on clay compared to acrylic. Rallies are significantly longer on clay than any other type of surface, which could lead to increased levels of fatigue. Shot rates, meanwhile, on grass are significantly higher comp compared to clay and acrylic surfaces. And now we'll go to our correspondent, Thomas Gretton, who is looking at the effects of various court surfaces on perception and training. So how do these various surfaces influence our behavior? To achieve a desired behavior, an athlete must accurately interpret and perceive the environment they're competing or training within. They must also acquire sufficient experiences that enable them to modify their behavior appropriately. In order to better understand how their behavior differs between court surfaces, we must first understand the tennis player's perception towards the environment, as these perceptions may reveal associations with biomechanical variables. A tennis player's perception may consist of the velocity of the ball, the distance from the net, and the distance of the opponent from the net. But for these perceptions to result in successful behaviour, the athlete must be able to process environmental information correctly. It is comprehensively studied throughout literature that skilled performers adopt a global perceptual strategy which allows them to inform their decision making ahead of time. For example, in a, recently, a recent study by Starbuck, they showed that players perceived the clay surface to be harder to change direction than their acrylic counterpart. As athletes perceive clay surfaces more appropriate for sliding, reducing knee flexion on landing and increased attack angle of the foot. For acrylic surfaces, Players perceived that whilst it would be easier to change direction, they were more likely to experience ankle inversion injuries due to the greater impulse experienced on landing. Here it is clear to see how the perception of a court surface can influence a player's biomechanical behaviour. However, being able to perceive a situation correctly does not come naturally. Successful perception and behaviour is consequential to experience. 
Experience develops the strength of an athlete's perceptual cognition. Having previous experience on a specific surface cements a more expansive knowledge of what behaviour is required to ensure success. Those athletes with greater experience on a specific surface are better able to accommodate to the court on match day through effective biomechanical responses. This is why training under match day conditions is so effective, as practice can be used to develop this experience and subsequently solidify an adequate perception of what behaviour is necessary during competition. It's important to begin to understand the relationship between the shoe and surface in tennis, as well as the shoe design itself and how these variables affect the tennis player. Interaction between footwear and surfaces influences the forces experienced by a tennis player. Regardless of the type of shoe used, peak utilized coefficient of friction is greater on clay than on hard court acrylic. As a result, tennis players adapt to the level of utilized friction by sliding on the low friction surface. Less knee flexion facilitates sliding on clay, whereas greater knee flexion contributes to breaking on the hard court. The surface, rather than the shoe, is the most dominant factor when considering effects of traction on the biomechanics of tennis players. When looking at the shoe surface combination and considering impact absorption, it is possible that the shoe, rather than the surface, plays a greater role in increasing impact absorption. When five test surfaces and two shoe models with differing midsole cushioning were used, the ranking order of impact absorption abilities of the surfaces was found to be similar. However, despite these similarities, biomechanical variables representing impact absorbing ability show that differences between shoes was much more significant. When switching between playing surfaces, the shoe has more potential than the surface to influence impact loading during running, which may have implications for overuse injury prevention. Shoe surface frictional properties can influence joint kinematics and ground reaction forces. For example, a surface that allows players to slide, clay courts in particular, can serve to decrease impact forces during foot strike. It has been found that increased surface cushioning will yield lower force and pressure loading rates, horizontal forces, and peak heel pressures, all of which are thought to be factors beneficial in lowering risk of in injury. Interestingly, peak impact force cannot be considered a good predictor for surface cushioning, as it was found to be lowest on the least cushioned surface. While there is not enough evidence to support altered muscle tuning activity patterns while contacting a hard surface compared to a softer surface, the possibility of that altered activity occurring cannot be ignored. In addition to the shoe surface interface, it is important to consider the design of the shoe. The difference between the heel and forefoot height, that is the shoe drop, might have an influence on reducing heel impact forces. Peak impact force was reduced the greatest in a 6 mm shoe drop compared to 0 mm and the habitual 12 mm when tested on children between the ages of 9 and 12 years old. Sudden shifts in the shoe drop can cause a more flexed knee at ground contact and reduce the peak impact force, but not enough to significantly decrease the peak impact force magnitude that was exhibited. Making this change in standard shoe modeling may be beneficial to children tennis players by decreasing lower extremity loading and therefore the risk of potential injury. A further consideration in court shoe design is the ability to provide lateral stability and traction control. Lateral stability is meant to prevent ankle injuries. Although a common modification is a high cut shoe, high top shoes may not decrease the incidence of ankle sprains. It is not completely known yet, but it is possible that changes to the midsole instead may affect the rear foot stability and provide better lateral stability. It has been previously discussed that there may be an ideal translational tra tra traction between shoe and surface, but it may also be just as important to minimize rotational resistance to accommodate the rapid movements and fast directional changes required for tennis. As surface properties vary from grass to clay to hard court, it is often recommended that surface specific shoes are utilized. Finally, the most common tennis injuries are lower back strains and inversion ankle sprains. 
Typical lower back injuries include paraspinal muscle strain, ligament sprain, and lumbar disc injuries. Inversion ankle injuries commonly occur on acrylic surfaces due to a higher coefficient of friction between the court and player, allowing less sliding during tennis maneuvers. The majority of tennis injuries are to the lower extremity, with injury rates up to two times higher in the lower extremity compared to the upper extremity. Lower extremity injuries are often acute, while upper extremity injuries typically occur due to chronic overuse. Figure 3 shows the injury rates of boys tennis players at the United States Tennis Association Championships over a six-year time period from the work of Hutchinson. Future research should continue to examine movements performed among, among tennis players on the different surfaces for injury prevention and performance improvements. Future research should also consider using pressure pads and shoes to get a more accurate sense of where exactly on the foot peak impact is occurring in typical tennis movements on different surfaces and within different shoes. Future research should also examine the training specificity on tennis. Further qualitative studies could be undertaken to identify whether the player's perception in training aligns with their perception during competition. In conclusion, tennis surfaces alter the biomechanics of tennis players, which could lead to performance and or injury increases or decreases. Adjustments to footwear should be surface specific and can continue to be modeled better based on future research. And finally, it is evident that training under match conditions contributes towards the facilitation of flexible, perceptual, cognitive skills. And acquiring these skills allows an athlete to change their behavior appropriately to successfully meet the demands of the environment. My name is Tom Scranton. I'm Jason Amadesian. I'm Marissa Liu. Stay classy, Munzee.